Hello tiny friends, welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis, I'm Jolene and today I'm going to be working in the Josephine house. I'm going back in the hallway to create a phone for this gossip chair. Now if you haven't seen the video on this and would like to, I'll put a link in the description box below. I actually modified a Bentley House Minis cat ear chair kit and I turned it into a gossip chair. So I've got three phones here and I'm not really sure. I'm thinking, I've been thinking for a long time about what kind of phone I can make. And I thought I could use some parts from these phones. This is a petite princess phone and the petite princess collection is not 1 12th scale, but this is the closest in size out of the three phones. Uh, it's very realistic. The Petite Princess collection was from the 60s and um, I received a box of broken parts and pieces. So you can see the receiver is broken and I thought it would be easy enough to fix and then I could use this phone in the house. But I decided that I was gonna take this piece and just recreate a whole new phone from this. So I'm gonna use this piece and I'm gonna use some parts from the other two phones as well. I purchased these two phones off of Timu and they're pretty cheap. This phone here is a metal phone and it doesn't have any detail. And I really don't know what kind of phone it's supposed to be, but I thought maybe I would be able to use the receiver and create a different type of phone. It also has a crank handle and I'm going to be using this crank handle today for what I'm making uh, because it's pretty accurate as far as what I'm going for today. And then I could use the top piece for another phone later on. I'll need another phone downstairs and I like the way the top piece looks. Um, as far as this phone here, this is a really cheap looking phone. I love the handle on it and I thought maybe I could use that today because it is more detailed but it's too bulky for what I'm going for. The other handle just looks exactly like the part that I need. But for this phone, I'm going to take the receiver off of it and I'm going to use this today. It is a bit bulky and big, so I will be scaling it down to size. When I created the gossip chair, I had a viewer um, comment and ask me if I would be making a candlestick phone for it. And although I knew what a candlestick phone was, I didn't know that's what it was called. And after looking through my options and seeing what type of phones that I have and thinking about what I can create, I decided to go with that. So this is what I'll be creating today. So these are earlier versions of the candlestick phone with the bell box and they don't have a rotary dial on them from the early 1900s. This one has a rotary dial on it but I'll be creating the earlier version without one. You would probably see the older version in an old farmhouse like this. And since the couple is older, they don't really update their belongings too often um, to the modern day and time. So you're gonna see a lot of older pieces. So I thought it would be more fitting to create the earlier version. So beginning with the phone, I've taken the receiver part that I needed and as you can see how big in size the receiver part is. So I am definitely going to have to bring this down a lot. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to work on the candlestick part to this phone. So I've taken off the plastic piece and I've also cut down the end piece here. This is what the plastic piece looks like. It kind of looks like a little horn. I'm going to cut this down as well. Now I'm just using these cutters. They're brand new. This is the first time that I'm using them. So I'm going to be very careful <laughs> that I don't break this piece. But since they're so sharp, it's super easy to cut. And now I'm just going to file this down so that it's nice and even. And it's a little longer than I need it to be. So I'm just going to bring it down to where I need it to be. And I'm just checking it to see where I'm at. I don't want to take too much off. So I'm just doing a little at a time. I'm going to use one of these hooks off of this old bra strap. It's pretty accurate and they look just like the little hanger part for the receiver on the phone. So this is what it looks like. And I'll be attaching that to the phone. I'm also going to use this earring back 
for the base of the phone. So now I'm gonna scale down the receiver part and I am taking quite a bit off of this. Uh, so don't worry, I need that much to come off. <laughs> so it looks like I'm barely gonna have anything left, but uh, it's accurate. <laughs> And I'm just going to file it down and work it until I'm happy with it. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And this does take a little bit of time. I think I ended up shaving off a little more after this. This is what it looks like. So it's pretty accurate now. And I can put it up to the candlestick and it looks pretty good now. So now that this part is done, I am going to be painting the three pieces here black and I'm going to use um, my black sequin it's a metallic sequin by folk art to paint these pieces it has a glossy finish to it and I won't have to put any varnish on it right now I'm going to use some super glue and this is my uh, Loctite super glue and I'm going to apply it to this jump ring and then I'm going to attach this jump ring onto the end of the receiver for more detail and this is what that looks like and it's beginning to look like a real little receiver piece for a candlestick phone now I'm gonna color the cord and I'm just going by the reference photos so I'm using a deep ochre and water and this is the wax cord it's like a it's kind it's a little stiffer than a embroidery string um but it is for jewelry making and it's the same cord that i used for the hatch door to the attic um it looks like a little rope so i thought it would be perfect for the telephone cord for the base i added a tiny micro jump ring and this is where the two cords are going to be attached there's actually a cord that goes to the receiver piece and then a cord that will go to the bell box so I'm going to add some of my super glue to the top piece here and add that little piece that I've cut. And I'm just making some adjustments to make sure that it's nice and straight. I'm just giving it a little pressure to make sure that it secures and takes a good grip. And this is what it looks like. So it's looking more like a candlestick phone okay all my pieces are prepped and now I can glue the candlestick to the base so I'm going to use the Loctite super glue and just apply some to the bottom of the candlestick and to the top of the base and then I'm going to attach the two together and I'm going to hold them for a few seconds and make some adjustments just to make sure that the candlestick is straight it really doesn't take long to take a grip but you do have a little bit of time to make some adjustments. Here is a close up of where I'm at so far. And I just have a couple more pieces to add to this. And this part of the phone will be completed. Now I'm going to add the cord to the receiver. And I've added a little bit of tacky glue inside the hole of the receiver. And I added a tiny bit on the tip of the cord. And I'm just going to pinch it and make it kind of like a point uh, this will be easier to slip into the hole and it'll stick really well there was already a hole in the receiver from the previous cord so all I had to do was actually just replace the cord now before I cut the cord it looks too brand new for me so I'm gonna dirty it up with a little bit of brown acrylic and water and I'm not gonna do the whole thing I'm only gonna do a few areas on the cord okay I've added the hanger to the receiver and I used the super glue and it just sits right inside a little groove that was already there and now I'm going to strengthen up the neck I'm gonna use some wood glue and give it a couple layers because right now it doesn't really match with the rest of the body it's kind of out of proportion and it's super flimsy and fragile. And I just don't want it to break later on down the road. Uh, this will help strengthen it and it will also thicken it up to the size I need it to be. 
So I'm gonna let the layers dry in between each one. I'm gonna move on to the bell box and I'm gonna begin with the bells because they're gonna take the longest. I'm using a couple bead caps, but these bead caps have a rigid uh, design to them. So I'm just gonna layer them with the wood glue. And this is gonna take four to five layers but I'm gonna let each one dry in between. This is going to make them one whole solid piece and kind of become the shape that I need them to be. So they'll look more like the bells on the bell box. And you can see, I'm just using a toothpick to apply this, but I'm making sure that it's completely covered and uh, there's no dents. There's gonna be multiple layers, so I'm not really worried about the first layer. But I am trying to apply this as smooth as possible and I'm just cleaning up around the bottom so there's not a lot of excess to have to cut off or file off. I use wood glue often for this type of thing and it does pretty much what you want it to do. Okay, so now it's time to dig through my old box of scrap wood and you can see I need a new box. I'm gonna dig through it and pull out a few pieces so that I can create the box itself and it looks like um, I've got quite a few of the jumbo popsicle sticks or the craft sticks so I'm gonna pull those out these are pretty thin and they'll be easy to cut and pretty easy to work with I don't want the box to be too thick so I think these are gonna be perfect for this I'm just gonna use the graph on my mat to determine the size of the bell box. And I'm thinking three by four, but I wanna make sure that that's gonna work out. So I'm just using a couple extra bead caps to place them inside just to make sure. And it looks like it's gonna work. So I'm gonna go three squares in width by four squares in length. So I'm just gonna mark where my measurements are so that I can cut this piece down to size. The jumbo sticks are pretty easy to cut when you're going with the grain, but I'm just using my craft knife to cut these. I'm going to need two of these pieces to be the same size. So once this piece gets cut out, I'm just going to lay it on the other piece and trace it out. This way I can cut this piece out. And now I'm going to file them down to make sure that they're pretty even with each other. So I have my two pieces and they look pretty good. And now I'm gonna cut four smaller pieces for the sides. And I'm just gonna use tacky glue to attach the sides. I'm attaching the sides to the back board of the box. The front board will be the door. Okay, tiny friends, it is now time to pull out my Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm gonna use this to stain my little box. And I'm also using a Q-tip just to remove the excess off. I'm gonna set these aside to dry and work on the inside. So this was the music mechanism that came off of the broken music box that I transformed into the wardrobe for Miss Margot's bedroom. And it has this tiny little wheel on it, uh, kind of looks like a saw blade. I'm gonna remove this piece because there's actually a wheel like this inside the real bell box. So I'm gonna attach this in there. But I'm not really sure quite yet what I'm going to create. I have a few more parts, but right now I'm just cutting this excess bar off of it. So I'm gonna create some sort of switchboard that will go inside. And I have these broken pieces from one of my grandson's trucks that I salvaged. <laughs> and I'm just gonna play around with some of these pieces and figure out uh, some sort of board, something that looks like it would be sitting inside this old bell box. It's not really a circuit board, because they didn't have circuit boards back then, but it's some sort of switchboard. So I'm just cutting this grill part down and I'm just gonna play around with the pieces and figure out what kind of looks like it would fit in there or look like it would be in there. These pieces from the truck are just plastic, 
but I've got some pretty interesting looking parts. So if you guys come across pieces like this, definitely save them because you can create uh, very interesting pieces that you may need for machinery or something like that. Okay, so I've broken down a few pieces and I figured it out. I have this tiny little piece that I'm going to use for like a front plate because when I was looking at my reference photos, I seen the piece that's in there and it kind of has like this metal front plate on it. So I'm just using my super glue to attach these pieces together. It's kind of like a little metal face plate, so it's going to sit on the front of the board like that. I've also got this little piece that has a couple prongs on it from being cut. So I'll attach the wheel on this side. I know for sure that's what I'm going to do. And at this point, I'm not really sure how I'm going to use this little piece with the prongs, but I'm definitely going to use it. So while I'm thinking about where that's going to go and how I'm going to use it, I'm going to age these pieces with a black acrylic wash. They are plastic and there's some sort of coating on them. So I'm using a wash with black acrylic and alcohol just to help it stick a little better. Okay, I jumped ahead and added a few pieces to the box. Now the inside of the door has a diagram of the phone on it. And I added some hinges from a shiny piece of cardstock that I had. And then I drilled the two holes that I'm going to need one for the handle on the side and one for the cord on the bottom. Uh, I also found this label um, that said caution, not a toy. And I thought that would be super fun to put inside the box. So I added the cord to the candlestick and uh, there's two cords here. The one goes to the receiver and then there's a super long cord that I have not cut down yet because I don't know how much I'm gonna need. I'm going to need to um, install the box on the wall. So I left this cord that's going to be attached to the box very long. There's also a battery pack that sits on the door and I used the toothpick and just glued two pieces together and painted it. This is the part that I put together with the toy pieces and the little metal wheel. I need to place a couple L-shaped brackets and um, some prongs in there so that the wires could attach to those metal pieces. So I'm going to use these bow tie clips. I came across this huge stash. So I have a ton of these little things and I've been using them for everything. I just love them, but I'm going to cut off the little metal stems and create some L brackets and use them for prongs inside the box. So I'm just going to use my silver chrome paint marker and I'm just going to paint these stems. These are super easy to bend. They're super easy to cut. I just love these little things. They were actually um, attaching clips for the crystals that make the sun catchers. Okay, inside the box is also a lime green wire. So I've taken some of that same cord that I've used for the phone and I just painted it lime green. You can also see the silver wire sticking out of the cord. So I'm just painting the ends of this cord with the same silver chrome paint. I'm just trying to create as many of the components that are inside the box as I can. It won't look exactly the same, but it's gonna be pretty close and it's gonna give off the same idea. The battery pack has some sort of white code or letters on it. So I'm just using white acrylic paint to create some dots and marks just to replicate that. The battery pack also has some connectors on the bottom of the pack and this connects the wires to um, ground them. They actually ground them to the hinges. So I'm just gonna use wood glue to create the connectors that sit on the bottom of the battery I'm just using a couple drops on each side. I'm going to let them dry and then I'll do a second layer just to give them a little more dimension. For the L-shaped brackets, I'm just using my needle nose pliers to bend the very tips of these stems into a 90 degree angle, I think. Yeah, 
I'm pretty sure. 90 degree? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I just want to make sure that they're nice and straight. Uh, then I'm going to clip them off. They're very, very tiny and I'm only going to use two of them. But the battery also sits on uh, some metal brackets and they actually go around the battery. There's a piece underneath and on top. So I'm also going to use these to create those pieces as well. When installing these pieces, there's kind of like an order to do this um, so that it's not difficult for me uh, to install some of the pieces. So I've added the handle first. There's no detail on the real handle, but for my satisfaction, I'm just going to color the very tip of this with an antique gold just to give it some sort of detail. Although there really isn't on the real one, there will be on the miniature. Next, I'll be installing some prongs and the L-shaped brackets that will be the connecting points for the wires. And I decided to add a prong right here to the top. I don't think there's one in the real box, but um, I just thought it would help fill it in and look good. There needs to be something. The box has like uh, screws with the prongs and there's the two uh, L-shaped brackets that are on the side that will simulate the brackets in the box that have the screws on them. And then I decided to add a second prong to the top. So I'm just going to place it right next to the first one. And this one actually went in there just like that. I accidentally dropped it and it just went right into place. Now um, I'm going to create a couple loops with the green wire because inside the box that I was referencing, uh, you can see how the wire is kind of raveled up. And there was a smaller loop inside of a larger loop. And then the wire was just kind of raveled up in there. So I just used tacky glue to create those loops. And I'm going to touch them up with the silver paint. Meanwhile, I had to clean off my tweezers because they just had so much hard glue on them. Here's a great way to do that. Take an emery board or a nail file and just file your tweezers file the insides file the sides file the outside it comes off very easily and not only that it sharpens them okay i'm going back to install my loops i'm installing the smaller one first and i'm just using tacky glue for this and now i'm going to install the larger one so the smaller one is in there and now the larger one will be placed in there and i'm putting it right in between the two brackets So it kind of looks like they're touching the brackets. And now I'm just going to take the remaining piece of the cord and just kind of ravel it up in there. And I'm using tacky glue to tack it down in some of the areas. Okay, I've got the first wire completed, the green one. And now I need to add a couple wires. Uh, so I'm going to use this threaded bead wire it's kind of like a thread it bends really nicely and i thought this would be perfect it really kind of looks like a little wire that would be in there um, so i'm just bending a piece into shape and i'm going to attach them from the l brackets to the little prongs that are sitting on the top i've placed two in there and i'm just kind of adjusting this one so that it looks like it's touching that metal prong on the top. Okay, so I got a couple more wires in there and this is what it's looking like. Now it's time to add the foam cord inside. So again, I've added a little bit of tacky glue on the end and I've just pinched it to a point so that I can insert it into the hole a little easier. Once I get it in, I'm just going to pull it through with my pair of tweezers. Now, this cord inside the box is actually just knotted up and then cut off. So I'm just going to create a knot. I'm going to cut off the ends and then I'm going to glue it down into place.
I'm almost there, tiny friends. The last piece is going to be the little board that I created. So I've glued that down into place with super glue and that completes the inside of the bell box. And this is what it looks like. It's kind of cool. Okay, so now for the door, which is gonna be the toughest part. I think this is the hardest part of the project. <laughs> so I've glued the hinges to the side and I'm gonna clip them down to hold them into place while they dry. But because the hinges are made of card, they're pretty thick, the door won't stay closed by itself. So I have to add a magnet and this is gonna be the scary part. Yep, I have to use my drill and I'm pretty nervous about this after all that hard work I did and redid. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've worked with craft sticks, you know how thin they are and I can't drill a hole all the way through. So I'm just trying to make an indent for the magnet to sit in. So I have just did a couple turns at a time until the magnet sat in far enough that it was gonna work out. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty scary, guys, but I took my time. Okay, and on the other side, I added a little pinhead um, nail. So I created a tiny little pinhole and just dropped that into place. And after all that scary stuff, they don't even line up, which is a good thing, because if they were to sit on top of each other, the door would look like it's open a little bit. So they actually snap close side by side and it worked out perfectly. Okay, the hinges need some work. The bottom one sticks out a lot further than the top one and they just look off. So to fix that, I brought out the wood glue and just gave that top hinge a couple layers of the glue. So now both of the hinges are at the same level for the most part and it doesn't look as off as it did. Now I'm just gonna paint them. So I'm just using a toothpick and the silver chrome paint from the paint marker. And that fixed that. So now the hinges look good. The door snaps closed and it stays closed. And now I'm gonna install the battery pack. And instead of laying flat, on the door the battery actually stands straight up so I'm just gonna install those little tiny pieces that I've cut to um, simulate the bracket case that sits around the battery pack and I'm using super glue for this as well for the connectors that sit on the bottom of the battery I painted those orange and added a tiny little silver dot in the middle to simulate the screws and now I'm just adding the metal piece that sits on top of the battery pack. Okay I'm going to use super glue to install the battery and it just sits right on this bottom metal bracket and just stands into place. So it looks just like this. And this was super fun to create all these little components for the inside of this box. So now I just wanna make sure that the battery pack doesn't interfere with the door closing because I had a problem with that for the first box and had to remake it. And now it's time to add the wires that go from the bottom of the battery connectors and they're actually grounded to the hinges. So the first one is actually bent and goes straight up to the top hinge and it looks like this. And I'm still using super glue for this. The second one connects from the other connecting point and goes straight down to the bottom of the hinge. 
and it just sits over the diagram like that. It's time to add the bells on to the front. And my bells are completed. I've sanded them and they're nice and smooth. Um, I did paint them earlier, but I added a few more coats of the glue. So there's about five layers of the glue. I'm gonna use this antique gold. It's a metallic antique gold by Folk Art. And I'm just gonna paint the bells with a couple coats of this paint. It's gonna take a couple coats. So I'm just gonna do a couple coats of this. And I'm also gonna age the hinges with a black acrylic wash to tone those down. Now I'm gonna install the tiny little buttons on the top of the bells and I'm actually using um, some of those bubble beads that I've used for Miss Margo's basin. These are the smallest beads I have that were bigger than caviar beads. I tried using the caviar beads and they were just too small and these ones were perfect size. So I used the silver chrome paint to color them and I just installed those with super glue. In between the two bells sits a bracket. So I've created that using uh, the stem of one of the bow tie clips. And now I'm just gonna glue everything into place with super glue. There's also a tiny little plate on the front that I thought at first was a keyhole, but I realized that it there was actually a screw sitting inside the plate. So I have um, cut off a tiny little piece of another bead cap and I'm using that. And I'm also using a micro nail from a dollhouse circuit piece. And I'm just going to place that into place. I've drilled a tiny little hole, so that's going to sit right inside. And I think this might be maybe for a turnkey. It wasn't actually a key hole. So here it is, tiny friends. It is finally finished. The little bell box that goes with the candlestick phone with all of its components inside. And I absolutely adore this little bell box. And I'm thinking, I really need to do this more often because I really enjoyed creating all these components that complete this piece. It just gives it more realism and makes it truly one of a kind. Don't be afraid to get in there and add all those tiny little details that are going to take your piece to the next level. Okay, tiny friends, I've installed it into place. And now Miss Margot has a phone upstairs that she can use her gossip chair for. I hope you all have enjoyed this video today. If you have, please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're subscribing, definitely hit that top bell notification button so that you can be notified every time I upload a new project. Gosh, I love this little box. When I come back to the hallway, there are a few more details that I need to add, and I also need to age this wall a little bit. I'll show you how I created that rug for the floor. I need to install the railing back up and make a few more items for the gossip chair. But I am getting there. And it is my pleasure to share my miniature journey with you all and show you what I'm making and how I'm creating it. Uh, I want to thank all my subscribers. Thank you everybody for subscribing and welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you all for coming along with me on this journey. And until next time, tiny friends, you all have a lovely day and I will see you all on the mini side.
Bye-bye.